It's about that time. Stern Pinball's newest pinball machine, Venom Pinball, is about to have launch parties go on across the country. And in today's video, I'm going to show you guys exactly what to do in order to win that launch party. Moving forward with this video, let's go ahead and go over a couple of things right now. That way, you, the viewer, understands exactly what I'm talking about. All the main shots on this video include the left orbit, the left ramp, the center ramp, the left horseshoe, the scoop, the right horseshoe, and the right orbit. Also of note are the infected targets, which can be found at the left stand-up, at the Carnage Captive Ball, at the Bell Tower, the two stand-ups in front of the scoop, and the stand-up on the far right. We also need to keep in mind that Doppelganger can be collected on the Pro at the left horseshoe. Other parts of this strategy include using Eddie Brock into Flash Thompson and eventually ending up with Peter Parker. The reason why we want to use Eddie Brock and Flash early on is because we want to get our locks early on, but on top of that, we want to also fill in their grid. Now, once we do fill in their grid, that means we're going to get extra time whenever we do end up fighting bosses. And we're also going to have plus one X play field available for us, which will increase our score during gameplay. Our other goal is to also get a six ball mayhem multi ball. The reason for this is going to give us two X XP, and it's also going to give us another plus one X for the play field. Now, keep in mind, stacking that up with what's going on in the grid. That is one plus one is two. Yes, we're doing great right now. And that's exactly what we want. We want extra play field multipliers available for us during the gameplay. The other part of this is, is that we want to stack Mayhem Multiball with Carnage Multiball. Now we don't do this until we have Peter Parker as our host. That is very, very important. I cannot stress that enough. Stack your multiballs when you have Peter Parker as your host. Peter Parker will help get your Carnage built up a lot easier and the points will be worth so much more. Something that's very, very important to do at the very beginning. Now, when you pick Eddie Brock, make absolutely sure that you use that left flipper to set up your skill shots. The main skill shot that you want to set up is on that left horseshoe, which is going to be spotting a mini mode. For those that remember, the mini modes are the three lights on the grid. And it's super important that you make sure that we complete these. And in order to complete these, we got to match up the colors. So if you hit a yellow shot, immediately hit the next yellow shot. You hit a blue shot, immediately hit the next blue shot. And if you hit a white shot, yes, that's right, immediately hit the next white shot. Now, the reason why this is important is because every single time you finish that, you light up part of that grid. You fill up the grid, you can move on to the next host. The other reason why this is important, every time you hit a combo, you'll work your way up to another lock which is indicated by the green triangles on the play field. Another thing that Eddie Brock does is that he starts out with two locks lit. Now, it's not really that important because you're gonna get your locks anyways from doing the combos, but make absolutely sure that you do not start a multi-ball. Every single time that you get to two locks and beyond, get on that action button, hold it down to make sure you cancel out your multi-ball. If you don't do this, May the pinball gods have mercy on your soul because you are going to play a multi-ball that's not going to be worth too much and it's going to make it a little bit more difficult to stack on Carnage and it's basically going to ruin this whole entire strategy. So stay on that action button. And we're trying to win our launch party so we need all that to come together and we're going to see how to do that right now. And we're finally off. All right, so starting with Eddie Brock and we make sure that we get our mini mode lit at the left horseshoe which is exactly what I'm going to go for right here. Now, by doing that, we immediately spot our very first mini mode, which is going to be that yellow shot. And of course, we have all of our ball locks out there right now, as a matter of fact. So I'm going to go ahead and take my first lock right here, and you'll notice that there is two other locks available. Again, because we're playing Eddie Brock, there's two locks immediately available. And because we got our first mini mode, which basically is our first combo, we have our third lock lit already. That's why you're seeing that. But again, very important. I cannot stress this enough. Make absolutely sure that you cancel out your mayhem multi-ball, which you're going to be seeing me do that continuously right here. And we're doing that all the way up until we get six locks. That's very, very important. Now, the way that the fast lock system works, it's really not that difficult to understand. If you get locks on your left side, it'll go to the left fast lock Get them on the center ramp over to the right. It'll go to the right fast lock. Now, we're going to go ahead and switch in the characters. or change changing the host via the left ramp because we already filled up our vertical grid. 
And again, cancel out. I'm going to keep saying that. I'm going to be a broken record because if you don't cancel it out, your goose is cooked. And it's not good because you won't have any of the grid filled up. So you lose that part. You won't really have Carnage ready to go. You won't have the right character for the Carnage stack, which is what we're going for. And that's where all the big points are. If you end up playing just a Mayhem multiball on its own, you're going to struggle. You're not going to score many points unless you just play it forever. So just keep that in mind. Now, right here, I had a little bit of a flipper fumble, but again, we're not really judging my gameplay right here. We're more or less showing you exactly what I would do in order to win a launch party. This is exactly what I would do. Now, with Flash, you'll notice I hit that right horseshoe. That also spots a mode or a mini mode. So make absolutely sure again on your skill shots that you have that set up. Now, those skill shots, too, whenever you're switching a host, those should be available as well. Just keep in mind, be paying attention with that. All right, lock is lit. We've done some of our combos still. We're making sure to fill up the grid. And yeah, as you can tell, it's not really that difficult to fill up the grid. You're following the lights. It's that simple. I've talked to a few people and most people out there, I say most, some people out there are kind of psyching themselves out and thinking that this rule set is super complex and everything. Trust me, it's not. You just got to follow the letters or follow the colors. And that's, that's all you're doing. That's all you're doing. Now, right here, very important. Because I'm on ball two, it let me switch to Peter Parker. Now, sometimes on ball one, I found I can't actually do that. I get stuck on flash, which is that second grid. And that's where I have to dump the ball out. If you get to that point, just try to get Carnage ready. Try to hit some of the infected targets because you're working your way to doppelganger. Stuff like that. That's really what you would do in that situation. But for now, I got to change my host right here, which is what we're seeing. So everything's pretty much primed up. This should be my very last log. I have my grid completely filled up with the extra time and with the plus one X play field. And I have both my fast locks filled up. So I got the 2X XP, which is huge. That'll enable me to get to a higher level, way past level 10 while I'm doing this. So that way it makes my battles with my minor bosses a lot easier to do once I get to those. And I also have another plus one X play field. And that's why you're seeing on the uh, play field right there, you can tell that I have the one and the two lit. So it's directly from that. That's why you're seeing that there. Now in Mayhem, if you haven't seen this before, at uh, the very first phase, you can go left ramp into scoop. You just keep going back and forth to help build your jackpots. But again, it's not really that big a deal with the score. It more or less is just giving me more XP to help me get up to the minor bosses. But you can also play this without even thinking about the XP. You can just play like a usual normal pinball rule set and you'll be perfectly fine just by hitting jackpots and everything. Because the XP will happen behind everything else either way. So as soon as you get done with phase one, immediately start going after that captive ball. That's what I recommend. And you see me doing that right here. And the reason for that is that's how I can light my Carnage multi-ball. At the same time, I can also start defeating Infected. I haven't really done that much right now. As you can tell, I'm still at zero if you look at the LCD. And now I'm finally at one because I finally hit an infected target more than once. So you got to hit it once to light. You hit it again to collect it. Now, right now, my Carnage multi-ball is lit up the middle. So that's what I'm going to entirely focus on. And what you're going to see here, here's where the points start stacking up. You're going to notice the blue triangles around the play field are lit. That's your Carnage jackpots right there. Red lights represent your Mayhem jackpots. Now, my final super jackpot for my first, I guess, round of mayhem is lit at the scoop, but I'm kind of flailing around, not hitting it. I'm not really that worried about it because I know my doppelganger is coming up, which I just hit right there. That's from hitting plenty of infected targets. And again, that's located at the left horseshoe. So we definitely need that. And now I can start going to town and hitting all the other shots. Now, a common tactic is, is that as long as you have the ball save on, you can go ahead and just kind of spray and spray, just flail around. There's nothing wrong with that. But once that ball save goes off, that's where you want to become a little bit more conservative, which you'll kind of see me do right here. Stay trapped up, try to stay under control. The main part of Venom is the ball wants to come back to your flipper. So if you know that, stay under control. There's really no need to keep sending it. If you try to play this game entirely flow based, you're going to get into trouble. OK, so try to be semi under control. Now, that being said, again, if you feel yourself not being able to be under control, then I would highly recommend just going Peter all day. 
That's a very viable strategy just to do that the entire time and not even change character because you still get the added benefit of being able to do Carnage Multiball the entire time as well. All right, so right now we have 14 infected. So you see how that just kind of just went way up there very quick. Again, if we can get to, I believe it's 10, we unlock Sleeper, which is our Adaball team up, plus our extra, extra time in different modes and stuff like that. And then we also, we get to level 20. That'll be our Scream uh, video mode, which can be found on the scoop also. And I mean, as you see through all this talking, we're already nearly at a billion points. That shows you how powerful this stack really is. And if somebody doesn't know how to do this stack and they don't realize it's here, they're going to have to really grind out points to even get to this point. And at the same time, I haven't even used my playfield multiplier either. And the way that you do that, you have to keep looping the center ramp over and over again till your bell tower lights up. And then you hit that and then that starts playfield multiplier. But I found too, in some instances, I feel like it's going to score a lot more than what it does. Other times it doesn't. So for instance, right now, the four is flashing. So that should be a 4X multiplier on the play field. But you'll see here in just a few that I think I get 20 million off one of the shots off one of the jackpot. And I'm not sure why that is. I don't know. Maybe somebody could tell me the math behind that real quick. But I would say multipliers are always a good thing. And this is the easiest strategy to go to to get multipliers going. And there's the 20 I was talking about right there. So, yeah, as you can tell right there, we come out of it. Mayhem's worth 219, nothing to sneeze at. But also, Carnage is going to be worth usually at least double that, sometimes even quadruple that, just depending on how you play it. So that's big time right there. So we get a mystery and we get to start our toxin team up again big time mode this is a wizard mode after you play both carnage mayhem and a doppelganger so you're gonna have three yellow lights lit you can play this in single ball unless you have sleeper if you want to you can add a ball during this point or you can hold on to them but you got to hit each shot twice so what i would encourage you to do is find a shot that's repeatable try to stay under control as much as you can as you can tell that left horseshoe a little bit dangerous on the return Probably the most dangerous shot on the pro overall. Everything else tends to want to come back to a flipper very safe, except for that shot. I would also look to try to backhand shots as much as you can from the left flipper. You can pretty much hit any shot in the game from the left flipper. Right flipper, not so much. You can pretty much hit any shot in the game except for the right orbit, unless you do some type of little post running pass or whatever you call it, rolling pass, just to kind of flick it up there. You can do that sometimes as well. So right here, we collect our first super, and now we enter the second portion to it, which is a multi-ball portion. So you see a ball get added onto the play field there. And we still have our add a ball to use as well. You can see sleeper flashing on the play field right there. And also, if you look in the upper left-hand corner of the LCD, it'll give you an indicator that he is indeed ready to go. And you have to use the action button for that. Now, I got a habit. I like holding down the action button just due to other games. So I think you can just tap it because holding it down, that gets my spidey sense going also. Which I think during this gameplay, I actually do that. And you see both go at the same time because I make that many mistakes. But I'm pretty sure you can get away with it just tapping. All right, so... There we go right there. There's some more jackpots coming on. And you can tell they get pretty healthy right here. So we started out this ball, I think, with less than 15 million points. And we're fast approaching 1.4 billion right now. And our level should be fairly decent as well. There's the add -a ball. And then there's my, uh, my Spidey Sense as well that's up there on the left horseshoe. And you can tell it's it's lit just by the way it's flashing. And you look in the lo upper left-hand corner, you see a countdown right there. Now, I choose not to take that just because I want to collect the shot that I know can come back to the flipper. And then I'll start hitting that other more dangerous shot. Because there is a shot available there besides the Spidey Sense. All right, starting to approach 1.5. Looking for just one more jackpot to light the super. My super's lit. Now we got to fight to try to get under control here. I'll be honest. I completely forget what I do right here. 
I got extremely lucky. That was an error right there. I would highly recommend to do the right post transfer separation or a cradle separation at that point, not just kind of flow away like I just did right there. All right, I get a, a deserved drain right there with the mini flipper fumble. And yeah, so right there, all six is pretty much. All that's worth a lot of points. And that's really the entire gambit right there. And we can do this without playing any bosses whatsoever. And we come out of it close to level 14, level 15. And after you do that, your character combo or your signature combos are available. And you're seeing me do that right now. Where with Peter, got to hit the left orbit, left ramp, left horseshoe, and then the scoop. The reason why this combo is so darn important is because that will light your hero hurry up at the scoop, which as soon as I collect this, if you look, you see it flashing right now. That's indicating that my hero hurry up is there and it can be worth a lot of points. Now, something like this, you don't necessarily realize it's there unless you just know it's there. There's nothing on the play field besides the LCD and the lights. Once you hit it, to indicate that this is even available in the game, but it's worth a lot of points right here. And of course, I show the benefits of playing a game without a tilt bob. I was not going to let that ball drain no matter what, because I wanted to show you guys how this works. And right there, 480 million points just from completing a hurry up. That's where a lot of points are in this game. And as you've seen, 2.8 million after two balls, I haven't even played any of the bosses yet. That's a lot of points. That's where they're at. And again, always be cashing in mysteries. You can get mysteries by going over the in lanes or sometimes the out lanes just because you can switch with your flippers. What's lit. And you got to hit so many to light your mystery at the scoop. Now, right here, I've got something else lit at the right orbit or not the right orbit, the right scoop. And I guess that's just a mini mode right there. So yeah, this is the point right here to where because I'm past level 10 and I finished my character's grid, the three dots the vertical line i can now go in and play the mini boss associated with that character which happens to be lasher against peter parker right here now whenever you play this you just generally want to follow lit shots it's that simple lit shot if you have a like a red triangle it's going to be a little bit of damage if you follow the actual insert that's lit it's going to be a lot more damage and that's the goal you'll just see it just kind of go back and forth and you hit what's available. And then once the yellow inserts are lit, it indicates you're about to leave that phase and enter the next phase. So simple, very, very simple. Not overcomplicated. Don't think too much into it. If it's lit, just hit it. When in doubt. The easiest thing to do in pinball and for this game, for Venom in particular, that is very, very true. All right, trying to get under control here. And I found that the bosses without a multiply play field, they're worth decent points, but all things considered what you've already done in the game, they're not worth a ton of points. They're more of like an in, an ends to a mean or a means to an end. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. A means to an ends. that I'm just trying to get the Grindle because that's where the points are. And I'm trying to get a handle on the English language, apparently, and understand how to do, I don't know, sayings correctly. Cracking myself up right now. All right, so 115. That's all Lasher is worth. Could have been worth a little bit more, but again, like I was saying, compared to what your score is, it's not really that much, but it's worth getting done just because you can start doing your locks again. You can get to Grendel. You could start doing your other stacks, hitting more Carnage shots if you want to, because you still have a hurry up right there. You still have Bloodlust. And those other two modes are associated with that captive ball at, uh, at Carnage also. But yeah, so that's really... Honestly, that's where all the points are with the strategy. Now, you can get away with doing some other things. And right here, I got enough infected that I can get another doppelganger. And, you know, one of the things is collecting doppelganger. Because once you do, I believe it's three, maybe even two, I forget. You light this mode right here, which is Rampage. You're just shooting blue shots to build up the value over time. And you'll collect that value at the left horseshoe over and over and over again while a timer goes. And this can be worth... Pretty good points, all things considered. And at this point, if you're playing this game in competition, that's all we're trying to do. Pile on points, put on pressure. Now, I would say too, I would probably recommend just generally going after Grendel if you can. Because Grendel's worth pretty good points. 
I don't know if I necessarily recommend playing just every single character unless you just absolutely want to or every single host. I think in this game, I might even play, go ahead and just play Gwen just for purposes of just showing it on this video. But it's perfectly okay to bypass that. And it's perfectly okay to, if you want to, like I said earlier, not even to play Eddie Brock in Flash Taunt. You could get away with just going Gwen to Peter because then you're just going to end up giving yourself uh, extra ball time, I believe, or extra ball save is what you'll give yourself, plus 2x experience as well. So essentially, you would get, what, 4x experience at some point? So the higher experience you have and the more powerful your character is, the easier it is to do those battles later on and collect points a little bit easier. But again, I don't know how worth it it is right now just because 100 to 150 million by the time you're cruising at 2 billion, I mean, I don't know. If you're playing somebody and you absolutely just need those points at that point in time, maybe it might mean a little something, but it just entirely depends who you're playing. And it entirely depends on what the pin setup is also. But yeah, that's pretty much the whole gambit right there. We went from about 15, 20 million to 3.8 billion in one ball following. Now, as you can tell, Gwen combos also lit. That's the other thing too. When you get this deep in the game, all the characters combos are lit. And I would say that that's pretty much, if you're willing to go after it, that could be worth most of the points. That's probably even more worth it than doing the battles themselves. Unless you're going to fight Grendel. Grendel, there's just a lot of points, a lot of value still in it. Even with the, I guess, trying to make it a little bit more difficult. I play it on this video. I didn't really find it to be too much more difficult, but... That being said, nothing is guaranteed on this game. You still have to hit shots. You still have to be prepared. And I think in this one, too, I end up making a tactical mistake where I had my balls locked. And I think I decided to go, instead of taking five and starting to do work on Carnage again, I'm pretty sure I end up deciding I want to go for six. But then I have a brain fart and I end up playing Grendel and I never come back to it. I'm pretty sure that's what ends up happening. Spoiler alert if you're going to watch till the end, but I'm not really remember. Now, anyways, we're playing Scream right now with Scream. I'm horrible at video modes. If you're great at video modes, good on you. What I like to try to do is I try to wait until they get close to me to start using my hair because you can double up on characters. But at the same time, if you have any mistiming, you're just you're going to get beat. And I still have not beat this video. mode. So it's definitely it's not a gimme at all. As you can tell right there, just I get all over the place. I get distracted. I don't even get halfway through it. <laughs> all right, there's ball five. And now this is kind of when I realized it. I, I know exactly what I was thinking right there. I realized that I still need to get another, another lock. So I decide I'm going to do that, and then I have a total brain fart, and I go right up the middle, and I start my next character, which is Fade. So, again, just lit, lit insert. That's all you're trying to do, lit shots. Not worried about anything else, plus you do have a little bit of ball save up until this point. And if you're this deep in the game, your character should be leveled up enough to where it's not that difficult to beat these bosses. As long as you're hitting your shots and you can hit them in a timely fashion in about 10, 15 seconds, and you keep adding time all the way up to 30 seconds, you'll be just fine. So right there, it's very important to realize when your ball saves on, that way you don't waste dangers. You don't do any unnecessary moves. Just looking for control, looking to hit lit shots, looking to get to the very next phase of the boss. And right there, we got him defeated. So because we did that, Grendel's now lit up the middle, or we could change our host. Just your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. I think this is where I was kind of debating on which one I wanted to go with. I think looking back on it, if I was going to do it again, I'd probably go with Peter Parker and start hitting the carnage a little bit more. You could do Flash right here. And another reason why to do flash is because it makes your play field multiplier a little bit easier to get because you make that bell tower larger than just that one target right there. It increases the size to the, the left horseshoe, I believe is what it is. 
So that's a main reason why to pick Flash in this spot. And I think the other why, the other reason why I picked him too is because I wanted to try to get to hybrid, which is you have to beat all your minor bosses to do that. If you defeat all four of them, then you're able to unlock hybrid, which essentially acts as a mega bomb with a 7x play field immediately activated afterwards. And that's where points can really, really pile up. Now, I don't know if I would go after that in competition, but for purposes of the video, I just wanted to go for it. I wanted to see what would happen. Because I was curious if I could get hybrid for Grendel. But unfortunately, that did not happen. Even though hybrid is lit on the playfield, which you can see with that green insert, I was not able to use it. So we're in Grendel right now. We're chasing shots. Anything that's lit, we want to hit. If you see a purple shot lit, which we just saw at the scoop right there, that's a special attack. That usually takes priority for at least my strategy to get, get that type of attack down. And then from there, I'm looking for just repeatable shots. Something that I can get back to a flipper. And another thing, as soon as you see yellow inserts, that indicates that that mode or that particular phase is about to be done in the battle. And you're ready to go to the next phase of it. And also, here's the flamethrower right here. Where when you hit the middle shot, it'll award all shots around you, or at least the two shots around you. The way that you get flamethrowers, you have to have that lower middle grid fully lit. Which, playing all four hosts, everything on the grid is lit at this point. But those hosts, you gotta do, I believe it's Flash and Gwyn to fill up that grid. Alright, another special attack there. Plus we got the yellow inserts lit. So as soon as we do this, we can get out of this phase and go to the next phase. phase three. And we're closing in on it. We just gotta win four phases to get past it. But what I'm gonna discover here, and this has rarely happened, but this does happen. If you take too long against Grendel, eventually Grendel will start fighting back. And the way that Grendel fights back, he or she, no, the dragon, will change your flippers. It'll invert your flippers is what happens. And that happens to me here in just a few. And it's difficult to contend with too, because there's really very little warning that's about to happen. And when it does happen, it happens quick. So in the future, just be aware of that in case you get to this point and you're not really making any progress like you're seeing me do right here. The posts, they don't score anything. So once you start doing that, that's when you need to start realizing, okay, wait, Grindel might be getting revved up to fight back. And at that point too, I was playing with two balls. I remember this part that I wasn't quite sure if that's what was supposed to be happening or not. But it happened. Decide to go with it. When you're in doubt, I would always trap up in that situation, get a TD over to ask, to make sure. All right, and there it was right there. Special attack. Flippers reversed. And sure enough, that just totally messed up my flipper. But anyways, that's the game right there. And that's exactly how I would approach Venom Pinball at a launch party. If I wanted to win... In a tournament playing this game, that's exactly what I would do. I'd go Eddie to Flash to Peter Parker, stack up Carnage and Mayhem Multiball, get my doppelgangers going, get the Toxin team up, do my signature combo, do my hero hurry up, play some bosses. That's what I would do. What would you guys do? Now, of course, just play any way that you want to play. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you get to that point and you're just not quite sure what to do play peter parker you could do that all day long and be just fine i'm sure i'll have a video out about that very soon but that's like really the beginner beginner part of it just to do peter parker all day that way you don't have to worry about changing host or anything other than that though thank you guys so much for watching and good luck at your launch party hope you guys kill it i'll see you guys soon